listen, while you're, while you're still standing, do this. Crystal, come on. I want you to turn with me to Jonah chapter two. Can y'all celebrate Crystal as she comes? Um, I, before we get into Jonah chapter two, I'm just gonna give you guys a breakdown of Jonah chapter one. Please hold me to 10 minutes so we can pray because I, I feel in my spirit what God wants to do. So listen, Jonah chapter one, what ends up happening in chapter one, uh, Jonah is what we would consider a minor prophet in the Old Testament. Um, not minor because of his gift, but just minor because there's only four books of Jonah in the Bible. So what ends up happening is God speaks to Jonah and he tells Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh. Everybody shout Nineveh. Uh, let me give you some background information. Nineveh was a very wicked place. But not only was Nineveh a very wicked place, um, a lot of Jonah's enemies, like they persecuted the country where Jonah was from in Nineveh. So modern day terms, imagine if America went to war right now because another country bombed us or attacked us. And then God said, hey, listen, I need you to do me a favor. The country that bombed you, the country that attacked you, I want you to go to their land and preach God's compassion. Are y'all following me? So he like, God, you... They, they, that country, Nineveh, like they oppress my people. They, they come after my people. He did not want to go. So Jonah paid a price. He actually purchased the ticket and he left and he went in the opposite direction and he tried to run away from God. And he tries to run away from God and then God sent a storm. And that's how we find ourselves in Jonah chapter two. So here's what Jonah chapter two says. I'm going to read the New Living Translation. And I'm going to read verses one through seven. And after I read this, then y'all can take your seat. It reads like this. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from inside of the fish. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me stop right there. End of chapter one. God sends a storm. Jonah gets on the boat. God sends a storm. Somebody shout, God sent the storm. I need to let you know that there are some times where we experience attacks in our life and we experience opposition and we always blame the devil and say that the devil did it. But what if I told you that sometimes it's not the devil who sent the storm, but it was God who sent it. So God sends a storm and then the Bible says that as he was on the boat, the people who were on the boat with Jonah, still chapter one, they was like, okay, like who did this? Who's the cause of the storm? Jonah said, listen, I serve the God of Israel. I serve the God who created the heaven and the earth, the land and the sea, and I'm running from him and I'm the blame of this. So then they threw precious cargo off of their ship. Because when, when you're on a ship, when you're on a boat and a storm comes, the way that you keep the boat from sinking is you try to lighten the load of the boat. Somebody shout yes. So they, they, they throw precious cargo off of the ship. That's why it's important for you to be connected to the right people. Because the people who were on the ship, because they were connected to the wrong person at the wrong time, they ended up losing things that were valuable to them. So what ends up happening is, is the Bible says that God prepared a fish. Somebody shout fish. The Bible says that God prepared a fish. They threw Jonah overboard. That's how we end Jonah chapter one. Jonah chapter two. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from inside of the fish. He said, I cried out to the Lord in my great trouble. And he answered me. I called to you from the land of the dead. And Lord, you heard me. You threw me into the ocean depths and I sank down to the heart of the sea. The mighty waters engulfed me. I was buried beneath your wild and stormy waves. Then I said, oh Lord, you have driven me from your presence. Yet I will look once more toward your holy temple. I sank beneath the waves and the waters closed over me. Seaweed wrapped itself around my head. I sank down to the very roots of the mountains. I was in prison in the earth whose gates locked shut forever. But you, O oh Lord, my God, snatched me from the jaws of death. As my life was slipping away, glory to God, I remembered the Lord and my earnest prayer went out to you in your holy temple. For the next five to seven minutes, because we've really got to pray, I, I want to preach the God of a troubled mind. Turn to the person beside you and say, bruh, bruh, we serve the God of troubled minds. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm, I'm going to run through this quickly. So one of the things that you absolutely have to pay attention to in life is momentum. Somebody shout momentum. Here's the thing about momentum. Momentum is the action
action of moving or being moved. So if momentum is the action of moving or being moved, the question that you have to ask yourself is what is it or who is it that I have in my life that I'm allowing to move me? In this situation, y'all know I can't sit long. In this situation, Jonah is being moved in a direction. And think about it, if momentum is the action of moving or or something, uh, or me being moved, a lot of times when you're moving, you're moving forward. Somebody shout forward. Can I tell y'all something? Everything that pushes you forward is not necessarily pushing you toward your destination. You can be pushed towards something, but it's not towards what God has for you. So Jonah in this moment, he is moving because God told him to go to Nineveh and he is moved to go in the opposite direction. What is it that moves Jonah in this situation? It's emotion that's attached to rebellion. Do y'all know what rebellion is? Rebellion is any time that you offer any type of resistance to authority. Is it possible that some of the storms that you have been moved toward in your life is a direct response to you moving in the opposite direction of the assignment that God has given you? So maybe, just maybe, the reason why your anxiety may possibly be at an all-time high, it's not because the devil is attacking you, but in response to you resisting the will of God, the authority of God, God says, okay, you're going in the wrong direction, so now there has to be repercussion. Repercussion, a lot of times, is an unintended consequence of an action. So what ends up happening, I've learned this. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 that God chastises those whom he loves. So may I suggest to you that sometimes when we are resisting where God is leading us and when we run the other direction, God in his wisdom will send a storm, but the the intention of the storm is not to hurt you. Here's here's the revelation. Uh, The chastisement, even though it may hurt, The intention behind the chastisement is not to hurt you. Somebody shout yes. Uh, Because I, I need you to understand who God is. Because God loves you, he will chastise you. He will discipline you. And his reason for doing it is not to pay you back for the wrong you've done. His reason for doing it is not even because he's upset or he's disappointed with you. May I suggest that God's chastisement is actually a reflection of his love. I'm gonna show you. If you are going in the wrong direction, that leads you away from his will, that leads you away from his good and perfect. Somebody shout perfect. I need you to know that God's plan for your life is not only good, but it's perfect. So if God's plan and God's will for my life is perfect, and I am resisting his perfect will, maybe that's why everything in my life seems broken. Because I've been running in the opposite direction of what is good and perfect for my life. So God sends a storm to serve as a detour. Glory to God. When you have a detour, that means that I was on a certain path and I was on a certain track, but then I reached a place where it said that this route is no longer available. Glory to God that he loves me enough that when I'm going down a path of destruction, he will send a storm to serve as a detour to say that this road of destruction is no longer available because I love you so much. Glory to God. And I'm so full of grace and I'm so full of compassion that I love you enough to chastise you, not to hurt you, but to get you back on track but may I suggest to you that you are responsible for how you process repercussion because sometimes we can realize I made a mistake sometimes we can realize I I, I made the wrong decision and if you're not careful you you will become a slave to regret you will replay over and over in your mind if only I would have done this better Show of hands, you ever had a relationship not work out and you keep thinking, if only I would have done this, maybe it would have worked. If, if, if only I would have been a little bit more forgiving here, maybe it would have worked. If, if only I would have been a little bit more compromising here, maybe it would have worked. Or have you ever had an opportunity that you prayed for, you really wanted the opportunity, you got the opportunity and then you ruined it. And you think like, this was a good opportunity. This is something I prayed for. It's something I worked for. It's something I exerted all of my energy to complete. And then I got the opportunity and I messed around and I ruined it. 
And if you're not careful, you will become a prisoner to recall. So you will replay over and over what you could have done. And what happens is if you get stuck in regret, that means that your progress has become a prisoner to regret. So now you're stagnant. And when God is saying, listen, I'm trying to move you beyond where you are, you get to a place where you cannot move beyond where you are to accept new possibilities because your mind is stuck in the past. So, so now you live in the tension of your own memories and your memories torment you because you keep saying, if only I would have did this. I need to let you know something. No matter what has taken place in your life, God calculated it before he created you. God is omniscient, which means that he is all-knowing, which means nothing you do will ever catch him by surprise. So can I suggest to you, and I'm learning this myself, that God is not as disappointed in you as you think he is. Because it's not a surprise to him when you made a mistake. He said, listen, I knew that y'all was going to make some mistakes. That's why I sent my son Jesus to die on the cross for you. So every mistake that you will ever make, it's already covered by the blood of Jesus. So when I look at you, I need you to recognize that the blood of my son has actually removed the stain. So because the blood of my son has removed the stain, you don't have to walk around with the stain of guilt, with the stain of disappointment, with the stain of shame. You can say, God, you are my justification. God, you are the one who sanctifies me. God, you are the one that I can embrace new possibilities and not be a slave to the mistakes that I made in my past. So no matter what my past has been, I recognize in this moment, God, that you were the God of new possibilities. So Jonah has a moment inside of the fish. And, and, and here's what it says in, in verse one. It says, then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from inside of the fish. Crystal, we're going to pray right after this point because I feel God shifting right here. Jonah is inside of the fish. But he says, I pray to my Lord. Somebody say, my Lord. Jonah had an epiphany. He says, this predicament may have me, but God still has my predicament. This circumstance may have me, but God still has my circumstance. This, this condition may have me, but, but God is in control of the condition. So the moment that Jonah got out of his own feelings, glory to God, the moment that Jonah got out of his own mind, the, the moment that Jonah stepped outside of his intellect and he started to embrace God by faith because he's swallowed up in a fish, my intellect would tell me I'm stuck. I, I, I need you to know that. I, I, I feel Wednesday night anointing uh, jumping on me now. Uh, the Bible says that Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. Watch this, I need you to know that there is a difference between the truth and facts. Listen, the fact of the matter is, is that he was in the fish. Jesus being the truth, the truth of the matter is, the Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver them out of them all. So I'm not looking at my reality or my facts, because when I think about the truth, the truth means that reality and facts now has to conform to whatever the truth is. So when God releases his word over your life, you don't have to become a slave to your reality or to your facts. But your reality and your facts now has to conform to whatever it is that God has released over your life. Stand on your feet. I feel God moving right here. I, I normally preach longer, but we we've got to pray. I feel a strong prophetic anointing stirring. So Krista was going to pray and lead us at this time. And however the Lord pricks your heart, be open to the move of God. Lift your hands we are and say, God, I'm open. He, he is the God of the troubled mind. Jonah's mind was troubled. His mind was plagued in that moment. But God said, no, no, no. Cry out to me and you'll see results in my response. Glory to God. Thank you for joining us for today's message. If God is impacting your life through this ministry, join us in reaching others all over the world by investing today. You can give at grovechurchva.com giving. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more messages like this one.